Hello and welcome. My name's Stephen Dickens and welcome to another Futurum Live from the show floor. We're here with you at Share in New Orleans and I'm joined by Dave Jeffries from BMC. Hey Super. Dave. Super. Thank you for having me again, Welcome Steve. to the show again. It's getting kind of a natural to this. It's becoming natural a thing. recurrence. They think us Brits sound smarter than we are, but we'll roll with it. Well, right? little do they know. <laughs> well, yes. we're not going <laughs> to convince them. So, a lot of listeners and viewers will recognize you on the show, but let's start with an introduction. What do you do for BMC? So I'm the head of uh, the mainframe development team. So that's got all aspects of research development for the 250 odd products that we have in the BMC mainframe portfolio. 250? It's a lot, isn't it? And they let you run it all? They Yes, yes. An adult is in charge, <laughs> some say, some may not say. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously though, Dave, there's yeah. a lot going on in the mainframe space. We're seeing the mainframe connected to this hybrid, multi-cloud, open source world. Yeah. Lots going on. We've got the open mainframe project. We're recording with those guys a little later. There's Linux now and becoming established in some of the biggest mainframe shops in the world. What are you seeing? You, I know from some of our conversations, we speak on a regular basis, you're chatting to customers a lot. What are you hearing? What are you seeing? Well, I think we're, we're starting to see clearly hybrid cloud take off, but a hybrid cloud also um, start to settle that the mainframe is a big part of it. But to be a big part of it, you've got to be open. Mm -hmm. You've got to be open to new technologies, new uh, open source, open telemetry. I know we've had a chat about, or maybe a more of a chat about that as we go through. Um, it's, it's a different world, and we're embracing technologies that are more freely available to kids coming out of college. Mm -hmm. All right, and, and I think you know, one of the biggest challenges we've always had on the platform has been skills. Um, and I think embracing those types of technologies is absolutely critically important. And every one of our clients is saying, help us make this platform more modern, help us make this platform kind of more accessible. And I think the open nature is the way we address that. You talked about open telemetry. I'm tracking that independently of the mainframe space, exploding right now. How are you seeing that come to the mainframe from an observability perspective? As we talk to pretty much every one of our customers, uh, you know, we talk about dashboards, we talk about enterprise management, et cetera, and it's becoming uh, key to us that people are taking our data and want to take our data into new spaces mm -hmm. and to merge and to, and to bring mainframe data into the general openness of, of the data kind of uh, and the, the telemetry that's moving around, around the operation and around the organization. So I think from our perspective, that's the way we enter that market. That's the way that we kind of normalize the data down. We give the right telemetry, the right speed, but we bring it not just a direct pass through from the mainframe. We put intelligence behind it and we use our intelligence to kind of pass that through to whoever's consuming this, whether you're consuming it in Splunk or whether you're uh, consuming it in BMC's Helix kind of platform. Mm -hmm. There are many different enterprise platforms these days. We have to get our data there. It has to be relevant and it doesn't have to be proprietary. It has to be open. We also talked, we had a long conversation a few weeks back around Linux and yeah. you touched on open source a few moments ago. What are you seeing in that space? It, lots of focus on Linux, on Z and Linux One. What are you seeing? Linux is hitting its sweet spot now. Mm -hmm. I think um, we got some data from from IBM a while ago that I think this is the first time that kind of Linux shipped MIPS and installed MIPS has surpassed ZOS and even ZOS is growing as well. Mm -hmm. Of course, we all like to see a ZOS grow. Um, we're seeing a lot of customers. We had <laughs> conversations with customers in the last few days while we've been here who are just seeing some astronomic growth around Linux and around enterprise Linux for many different reasons. It's like the ESG kind of regulations, sustainability, just pure consolidation, but also leveraging the platform, Linux One platform, uh, security, crypto, um, IO speeds, etc. There are so many advantages. And I think people are just starting to understand that it's something they can embrace and not fear. We've spent probably five or six minutes now in August of 2023 and we've not talked about AI. That's probably a record. That's weird, isn't it? Yeah. That's a record. Joking aside, though, yeah. <coughs> I know you guys are doing a good job with the AI ops portfolio. There's a lot of, obviously, hype around the large language models, and everybody's <coughs> trying to either AI wash their portfolio or look at ways they can deploy AI from an enterprise perspective. What's the BMC angle? 
I think there's a number of facets. I mean, AI clearly is exploding. The AI is the answer to everything. Mm -hmm. um, I'll take it from a, from a skills perspective. I think if I have one more chat about what are you doing with GPT, all right, what's your approach to GPT, um, then from, from our side, we, we look at it as a terrific opportunity, uh, but we have to be cautious. AI in the wrong hands, very dangerous. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that. Uh, manipulation of AI models, good and bad, dangerous in the wrong hands. I think we're bringing uh, a sense of realism to the platform with our AI ops portfolio and our operational insights, which is starting to get good traction now because of the skill set. All right, it's like an SME in a box. Mm -hmm. That's the way I like to kind of think yeah. of it. Um, so that's starting to grow. We're looking at GPT because GPT, again, it's like a, an SME capability. Uh, we don't have those people around the organization. We probably won't have them around the organization for the next five or 10 years or so because they're kind of moving out into the next you know, journey in their lives. So does GPT give us an opportunity to, to address that need? I think it's well worth exploring cautiously, but I'm optimistic about it. Mm -hmm. We talk about optimism there. We're talking about innovation. We're talking about yeah. new things coming to the platform. One of the things kind of in the shadows, that specter sort of looking over everything we're doing is cyber security, cyber resilience. The threat landscape's completely changed to even where it was four or five years ago. What I know BMC's doing a lot in this space, but what are, what are you specifically hearing from clients right now? I think it's something that clearly more and more people have visibility to now mm -hmm. and awareness. Uh, I think certainly two or three years ago, it was a case of, well, until it really hits, who owns the responsibility of making sure you know, we've got a cyber resilience plan? I think it's much more up front and center now. Uh, we've obviously done a bunch of things and we've, we've made an acquisition in the, in, the, in the Amy Cloud product set mm -hmm. to bring that in and, and to further bolster kind of our solution around that space. Um, you know, I think. Again, AI has a role to play in this, but it's also kind of that threat aspect of AI. The platform is, is secure. The platform is, is, a, is a terrifically secure and well-encrypted and um, well-managed platform from mm -hmm. a vulnerability perspective. You see that, okay? Um, so I think certainly in front of mind for us uh, is to address customers' concerns around how secure is my data? If something happens, how quickly can I resume production, mm -hmm. what's my business resilience like? And so we're putting a lot more focus in ensuring that bus business resilience, recovery point objectives, recovery time objectives, which we know are absolutely critical to managing a the business, they're front of mind, front of center, and that's what we're trying to build solutions around that. So we're here at Share in New Orleans. What would be the one takeaway that you could give to customers stopping by the BMC booth? Come and have a look at our Amy Cloud solution. Okay. Um, because I think it is, it's very different. It's our entry point to the cloud. Uh, and it's, it's something that we didn't necessarily take lightly. Um, very, very good technology from a you know, very good and very innovative company. And we're really starting to see them kind of integrate very well into, a, into, our, into our platform set and our, our products. There are many more things for us to kind of explore in that space. And you really see all these technologies, AI, insights, um, cybersecurity, all kind of merging together to be a really robust solution. Well, I think that's a great way to finish and summarize. Dave, always a pleasure to have you on the show. Super, Steve. Thank you. You've been watching Futurum Live from the show floor. Please click and subscribe. Do all those things to help with the algorithms, and we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks very much for watching.